Uh, let me start with a Gaudic shading operator, the definition. So today we will talk about a one-dimensional shading operator in this form. So this, I, <coughs> this H acting on <coughs> L2Z and acts on a Psi in a vector Psi as follows. Psi n minus n plus one plus Psi n minus one plus here we have a function evaluated. So here we have a function v evaluated at tnx. <coughs> so this part can be viewed as a discrete version of a free Laplace. And this v we usually call it the potential. And this function v, we call it the potential function. What is the index? Yes, I'm going to say it. <coughs> so we'll consider x in a d-dimensional torus. This means the torus, which is 0, 1 torus, higher dimensional. And this t will be a map that acts on the torus. So we are, we are evaluating this function along the orbit of this x. So today I will focus on two kinds of dynamics. So the first is the sh uh, shift on the torus. So basically, the first one moves x to x plus alpha. And both x and alpha, they are d-dimensional vectors. And if alpha is a rational vector, then it's simply periodic. So we are interested in when it is not, when alpha is somehow irrational. So this is a shift. And usually we, we call those operators defined by the shift. We call them quasi-periodic operators. The second kind of dynamics we are, we I want to talk about is uh, it's called a skill shift. So it acts on T2. So you take a point x, y on T2, two-dimensional torus, and it's mapped to a point x plus alpha and y plus x. So in the first coordinate, you just rotate by alpha. In the second coordinate, you rotate by x. So skew shift uh, arises from quantum kicked rotor problem. This is a very special skew shift. Really? You don't, you don't allow a more general function. Why this very special? Is that because what you can deal with? I didn't know there are general skill shifts. I know there are higher dimensional, but I didn't yeah, know. You can glue anything with a function. Uh-huh. Yeah. But this is, was the one I knew. <coughs> so, so V is a function, a, a, a nice function on X, or on your on, on torus? Or? Yes, V, v, uh, v can be an analytic function on the torus. But usually, it's very interesting when it only can say v only takes the second coordinate. Because if it takes the first coordinate, then it's the same as the quasi periodic. So, your, for example, for skew shift, a very interesting function for v would be vxy always equal to, say, the simplest case, cosine 2 pi y. So, even for this very simple function, a lot of things is unknown. Uh, v is just a function on the TD torus. But today I will focus on when V is analytic function. So today let's assume V is analytic function on the torus, a real value and an analytic function. Uh, there are some, uh, some problems, there are some models with function v with very low regularity. For example, the Fibonacci Hamiltonian. But today, I will focus on the analytic case. <coughs> so 
So since V is real valued and this is a self adjoint operator, we want to study what is the spectrum of this operator like. Uh, let me start with quasi periodic. This is quasi periodic. So, what do we know for quasi periodic in, for example, one dimensional? If D is equal to one, then you have zero, one circle and the shape down the circle. Uh, let's take the simplest possible function for V. For example, when V is equal to we introduce a coupling constant, lambda. So if V takes this very simple form, then it is known as almost massive operator. In physics, it's known as a Harper's model. <coughs> so one can view this operator as an infinite dimensional tridiagonal matrix. So this is our H, is infinite dimensional matrix. On the diagonal, we will have, uh, we have lambda cosine 2 pi x, lambda cosine 2 pi x plus alpha, and so on. On the F of the diagonal, we have some ones on the F the of the diagonal. But in the other places, we have zeros. So this is a tridiagonal matrix. So it turns out this very simple looking model has very complicated spectrum. So it was first numerically studied in 1976 by Hofstadter. So he plotted the spectrum for this operator for different alphas. And I printed, uh, <laughs> because I didn't want to use the slides. So, so he generated this very beautiful butterfly. And vertically is alpha, so, and horizontally is energy E. The black part of this picture is the spectrum. So this is really the, the spectrum for different frequencies. So it has a very complicated fractal structure, and now this picture is known as a Hofstadter butterfly. <laughs> you could look up in the, there is a colorful version of this picture, which is even better. Um, it was conjectured mathematically in 1981 that the spectrum is a counter set. Of course, for the non-trivial coupling constant the lambda and, uh, and the non-trivial alpha. So this was proved in 2009. The, the complete solution was given in 2009 by uh, for, 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 non, for irrational alpha. If alpha is rational, then we have the band structure, yeah. So this was completely solved in 2009 by Avila and Chitomir I'm sorry, lambda doesn't matter? Uh, Non-zero lambda. If doesn't matter. Yes. Uh, thank you for pointing out. And then if we consider more general potential, like it's, for example, just real value analytic function, the counter spectrum is also proved. Uh, for almost every alpha, well, in the positively exponent region. But 
but uh, today, since the time is limited, let me not uh, talk about what is <coughs> the exponent. So this was proved by Goldstein and Schlag, with Schlag is all in, all in here. So, so as you can see, if d is equal to one, then it seems <coughs> counter spectrum is quite a general structure for quasi periodic operators. Then once we consider higher dimensional underlying dy dynamics, so for d greater or equal to two, we have higher dimensional torus. Then it is also for analytic potential v. Let me put a coupling constant lambda just to introduce the result. So for analytic v, it, it, it has been proved uh, very recently, like about a, a month ago, by Goldstein, Schlag, and Voda, that the spectrum will be an interval, interval set. It's a single interval. For large lambda, so if this disorder lambda is larger, then one would have interval spectrum. This for the shift yes, for the shift. I'm still talking about the quasi periodic. So, <coughs> the okay, what's the nature of the spectrum? Are they, are they bound states? Excuse me? Are they square integrable eigen? Why spectrum? I mean, the spectrum you're saying as a set is an interval. But it, are they embedded eigenvectors? Yes, they will have point spectrum, right? Yes, point spectrum. You have localization. Yeah, you have localization. Yeah. Always, for all the cases you described, it's point spectrum. Lambda, uh, not really. For the almost massive, for lambda, for okay, this. For lambda smaller <laughs> than almost massive, it's AC spectrum. For lambda equal to one, it's a singular continuous spectrum in general. So that is. For quasi periodic, so there is very different phenomena for d equal to 1 and d greater or equal to 2. For skew shift, it, it turns out very long, very, very little is known for the skew shift. <coughs> In fact, if you consider the iteration of the skew shift, so for example, if iterate this map n times, then one would have x plus n alpha and y plus So there will be a term that is n square alpha. <coughs> appeared in the skew shift. So therefore, people think, OK, although the skew shift is connected to the quasi-periodic case, but people think it's more related to the random case. So people think for the skew shift, there should be random. Uh, there sh it should have some phenomena that occur to random potentials. For example, if we take this very simple potential. The conjecture is for any lambda greater than zero, for any non-trivial coupling constant, the spectrum is an interval. So there are some partial results about there are some partial results now which shows the spectrum contains the interval when lambda when lambda is very large. However, it's far away from complete, right? So because this conjecture is for all the lam all the coupling constant lambda, and it the conjecture is about the spectrum is a single interval, not only contain intervals. 
so during my time at the institute, I plan to, in particular, work on this problem. So try to make some progress on showing the spectrum as an interval. How much time do I have? You should be finishing. Okay, it's, okay, then I will just stop here. Thank you.